With rumors abounding about the potentially imminent release date for the new Apple Silicon Mac Pro, I can't be the only one who's wondering. Does anybody actually need that? So today I don't wanna focus on performance. I wanna focus on how the Mac Studio can be the centerpiece of a professional workstation because of how versatile it can be as a hub for all the other stuff that makes a professional workstation actually possible. And along the way, we're gonna solve one of the biggest problems that I have with the Mac Studio. So get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's get started. So, the Mac Pro. A lot of us have been really excited to see what an Apple Silicon Mac Pro will look like just because we're curious to see what Apple can do when the sky is the limit. But down here in the real world, I have to wonder if a Mac Pro is actually necessary for the overwhelming majority of people. I mean, I am what I would consider to be a creative professional. I make a living with this Mac Studio right here. And honestly, it's a little bit hard to imagine what more I would be able to accomplish with like 40% more CPU performance or 60% more GPU performance. Like those numbers, they don't mean that much in my day to day. And paying for all of that extra hardware doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. I, for example, did not really find any difference in terms of Final Cut Pro rendering or exporting with my workflow between the 48 and 64 core M1 Ultra Mac Studios. So then the big thing holding the Mac Studio back is the package. It doesn't have internal expansion, no PCI lanes, no modular graphics cards, no upgradable storage. But does that mean the Mac Studio can't be as useful as a hypothetical Mac Pro? Well, today I'm gonna show you how I've been able to use the Mac Studio to its best to do what I need it to do. And this video is made possible by today's sponsor, Synology. Specifically, the new DS1522 Plus NAS, which you'll hear more about shortly. But real quick, before we dive into everything that I have used to turn my Mac Studio into the ultimate workstation, I do wanna mention that everything I'm talking about today will be linked in the description below, and those are affiliate links, so if you do use those to buy stuff, it will help support the channel, so I very much appreciate that. So the biggest gripe that I have with the Mac Studio is the way that it handles storage. Apple decided to manufacture these things with removable storage modules, but they won't actually let you or I upgrade the storage in our machines, and that is really frustrating. So the first thing that you have to do with a Mac Studio is find a workaround. But that doesn't mean that it has to be complicated. I mean, I rely very heavily on my Samsung T7. I mean, these things are just the best. They are small, portable, not that expensive. I've got one and two terabyte versions linked down below. You can even get these things with fingerprint recognition for added security. So definitely pick up one of these. But this on its own, is not gonna cut it. My YouTube channel generates about two terabytes per month of Final Cut libraries, and that's a lot. So even if I were to pay the exorbitant price and fully load out a Mac Studio with eight terabytes, I'm gonna need something else. Until recently, that came in the form of this, my 48 terabyte RAID array. This thing is pretty simple. It's an OWC Thunder Bay, which I'll have linked down below, of course. And inside of it, we've got four 12 terabyte hard drives just set up in RAID 0. So it's just pure storage. So because it's RAID 0 and it's over Thunderbolt, we can get about a thousand megabytes per second sequential read write speed. So that's pretty good. But this I've had some issues with. It's not the most responsive system to use. It takes a bit of time to get it all booted up. And I've been looking for something a little bit better for my day-to-day -day video editing. And that's when Synology reached out to me. Oh, we got a big old box of treats today. Let's see what we're working with here. Three 12 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives. These are some absolute beefy boys. Oh, and then we got the DS1522 Plus itself, a network upgrade module. 
two 480 gigabyte SATA SSDs. And here is the actual box itself. Look at that. There's even access ports on the bottom for NVMe SSDs. So you could upgrade this thing with even faster drives. So let's go ahead and start the assembly process. It should be pretty simple here. This 10 gigabit ethernet upgrade module. Now this one actually is pretty cool. Very easy to install. There's a little hatch around the side here with two screws. And with those out, you just pop off this little cover and slide in the 10 gigabit module. Ah, oh, that is beautifully simple. Okay, so then we just flip around here and we've got our five bays and we can populate those with our many, many drives. All right, so let's install now. We'll do SSDs first. Ta-da! Now it's time to go set it up. Setting up the DS1522 Plus was pretty easy. It connects to its own local host and it actually has its own operating system. The DS1522 Plus has a Ryzen processor and eight gigabytes of RAM, which allows you to get this graphical interface so that you can manage plug-in installation through the package center, managing your volumes and drives, and configuring backup settings. You can choose from a bunch of different RAID types, including SHR, which has the ability of withstanding a drive loss without losing any of your data. For my storage pool with the 12 terabyte hard drives, I decided to go for an SHR partition, which gave me drive redundancy and 20 terabytes of storage. Whereas with the SSDs, I decided to go for RAID zero so I could maximize my storage space at about 900 gigabytes. So if we look at these guys side by side, it looks very similar. They're both black boxes full of hard drives, but there are some key differences. The big advantage that we get using network attached storage is that it's attached to the network. So rather than access all of the files locally over a Thunderbolt connection, you can connect to this thing from anywhere. Now I have it set up to run directly over a 10 gigabit connection because the Mac Studio's got 10 gigabit, we upgraded this thing with 10 gigabit, just straight up plug an ethernet cord in and you're done. You've got about a thousand megabytes per second read write on both the SSDs and the hard drives. That's pretty great. But beyond that, I can even access my Final Cut libraries over Wi-Fi on a laptop. So one of the biggest problems that the NAS is solving for me is essentially the issue of idle disks. With my Thunderbolt RAID array, when you stop actively reading and writing to those drives, they will go to sleep. And that can be really annoying when I'm working on a video project because sometimes I'm not you know, over in the Final Cut Pro window. Sometimes I'm on my other monitor doing research, finding B-roll, finding articles. And then I go back to Final Cut Pro and it takes a while for the timeline to wake up again. So we're on the desktop here. Final Cut Pro has been open in the background for a couple of minutes. If I go over here and hit the space bar, it's the month when I tested. There was a pretty big delay and it gets worse. There are some times where it will fully freeze and crash Final Cut Pro. So that's definitely not ideal. But now with the NAS set up, I've had it idling in the background for several minutes. I go over here, I hit the play button. Pretty much every single and that's pretty much immediate. Single port on this thing. Not a lot of lag there. So that is a major improvement. And this is also off the hard drives. So this system is just way more responsive than over Thunderbolt. So when you combine all three of these magical boxes, we get about 70 terabytes of storage, we get 64 GPU cores and 20 Apple Silicon CPU cores. So this is quite the combination. This is basically the foundation of what makes this channel run. That's all well and good, but we need something to look at the contents of all of these boxes on. So let's talk monitors. So what Apple wants you to use and what I frankly use every day is the studio display. It matches the look and feel of the Mac Studio for sure, and its built-in speakers, microphone, and webcam mean it's a nice one cable solution. But let's be honest, if you're doing video production, sound design, pretty much anything where you have to listen to or record video or audio, 
you're probably not gonna use those. I, for one, connect a pair of speakers, a camera, and a dedicated microphone to my Mac Studio, so, Given that at that point, you're not really tethered to many of the extra features for the studio display, I'm basically paying 1600 bucks for the panel. If you don't need 5K, for example, you can take your pick from any of a thousand excellent 4K monitors. I linked some nice ones down below. Or you can be a weirdo like me and repurpose an old 5K iMac into a 5K USB-C display. But what if all of those options bore you? You want something that's larger, that's got OLED, that's got high refresh rate, and that's cheaper. Well, why not use a TV? This is the LG C1 55 inch 4K OLED TV, and it honestly makes a really good computer monitor. You can pick these things up for 1200 bucks, or perhaps even better, you could get the 48 inch version, which has a higher pixel density for literally like 900 bucks for a 48 inch 4K OLED screen with 120 hertz refresh rate. Whoa, that's freaking what? Maybe more people should be using TVs as monitors. I mean, if you get your viewing angles right, that's a pretty awesome experience. So the biggest takeaway that I want to impart upon you guys watching this video is that the Mac Studio, even though it doesn't have a lot of internal expansion, can still be a very versatile tool. So to give you an idea of what that all looks like, I've showed you a lot of things, a lot of options and different tools, but to finish this video up, I wanna talk about how I have it set up. So. This is it, this is my editing bay. This is where I edit every single video. This is where I do my podcast, Dark Mode, every Sunday at 9 p.m. This is where it all happens. And this is how I have it set up. So first up, you can probably see it peeking through there. We have the M1 Ultra 64 core Mac Studio. That is our hub of activity. Now connected to that primarily, I have the studio display, but I'm definitely a dual monitor type of guy. So over here we have my DIY studio display, which I made back in April. So those are my two 5K displays, but there's a lot more plugged into this thing. I mean, a lot of this video has been about storage. So how do I have that set up? Well, my internal drive on the Mac Studio is just the normal one terabyte. I didn't wanna give them any of my money because I have a 48 terabyte RAID drive, which is plugged in over Thunderbolt down below the desk. Now with the Synology drive, which is plugged in over there where my router is, I've got that hardwired over a 10 gig connection. So what I'm doing now is copying my library over to it so that I can edit off of it. And I have that configured with a one terabyte solid state drive and 20 terabytes of hard drive storage. So if we put all of that together, I've got 69 terabytes of external storage, nice. So that does it for the computer, for the monitors, and for the storage configuration, but because I'm a YouTuber, there's a lot of video stuff that goes on here. I film entire videos, I film ads, and I shoot my podcast here. So, so I've got my Elgato key light over there, and then next to it is my GH5, which is connected via a Camlink 4K to a USB port on the Mac Studio. And then on top of the camera, you might not even be able to see it, is an XLR mount and a preamp for the Shure SM7B, which I use for audio. So audio and video all go over the cam link. It's not the best quality, but it's convenient. And then that all connects to my dual monitors and my 69 terabytes. And wow, when I say it out loud, this setup sounds like a bit of a mess, but it honestly works really, really well. And I didn't even mention that I have my Logitech speakers plugged in here uh, because the studio display speakers, they're just, not gonna cut it. So yeah, that is my full build out with my Mac Studio. It's a lot, yeah. I, I use pretty much every single port on this thing. And honestly, I'm really happy with the way it works. Do you actually need a Mac Pro? I mean, I've been grappling with that myself. I've obviously been very excited for one to come out, but Having this Mac Studio, not even top of the line, I didn't get the extra insane amount of unified memory or storage, so it really does make me wonder, do I need more than this $5,000 Mac Studio to run my entire 400,000 subscriber YouTube channel? I honestly don't know. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would very much appreciate if you leave a like on this video and get subscribed and turn on notifications. There's going to be a lot more coming over the rest of this year, and I look forward to seeing you guys there. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.